before we get into the actual physical things about it, uh, Monty, what do you think are some of the qualities, uh, or at least the mental thoughts going on inside the mind of a really great pitcher of the ball? Um, it, obviously, it's going to be extremely individual, but to me, most of the good pitchers that I've seen, you know, and that I've, I've talked to have a sense of it, it, it's, you know, there's the target and it's the same as, as I was ta tossing something. Yeah. Both the motion and the, and the, and the idea and the abstract. Okay. Both the concrete and the abstract. It's, you know, the actual motion, the right arm motion is like you'd be tossing a golf ball. Yep. This is what good, how good pitchers move. And then it's the idea, and I show the people this when I'm giving them a pitching lesson. I set up three balls, and I say, I'm going to hit one to this target that's about 10 feet away, one that's like 30 feet away, and one that's like 40 yards away. And I don't even look up at them. I say, and I do it as I'm talking, and I go, okay, this one's about that far away, this one's about that far away, and this one's about that far away. Mm -hmm. And I never hit. I almost always hit the ball solid, and I almost never hit it that far away because I'm not thinking about how far do I have to take it back, how much should my wrist hinge, you know, do I need to finish here, you know, how much speed do I need to put on this? I'm reacting to a target, yeah, you know, and you know, and and again, it's nothing more complicated than, you know, when you're if I were tossing you this a golf ball yeah. from here, I wouldn't go, I'm gonna take it back three inches and follow through to here and I'm going to hold my right wrist angle at 45 no, degrees. No. I just kind of go like this. Yeah, and, and as you move further and further away, yeah. you know, right. and, and to me that's, that's, you know, there are always exceptions. Because if you were allowed in, in, in the short game, if you were allowed in golf to pick your ball up and underhand it, you get it inside 10 feet every time. Pretty much. Yeah, basically. Like if you could take it out of the bunker and just throw it or you could go to here. So the feel is within you. Right. Yeah. And that's why I don't understand. I mean, I understand like the low skipper and the low, you know, you know, driving shots. But on like just a standard pitch where you're hitting a, a, a you know a mid or high soft shot, yeah. that's why I don't understand the idea of maintaining that right wrist angle like this. Yeah. Because if you were tossing a ball, you wouldn't toss like that. Okay. Okay. And and you wouldn't freeze your wrist either. Yeah. And you also wouldn't float load it. Okay. You just draw it back. Yeah. You know when you drew it back, you'd get a little bit of set. Yeah. And then as the arm decelerates, you know, you you also wouldn't flip toss it like this. Yeah. And you wouldn't stop your right arm at at, at release point. It'd just be a constant this right. motion. Right. Yeah. And that that's why, you know, people get the idea, and it's really funny. I've had, yeah, long story. I won't bother. But I was giving Licklider, tour player, a yeah. lesson out here one mm -hmm. day, because he was holding on too too long, and he was hitting everything in the toe. Yeah. Gore, Jason Gore was having the same problem. They were holding onto this right wrist angle too long, yeah. and that'll make good pitchers hit it in the toe. Okay. Okay. Mm. And this old man who was, you know, chunking every other shot says, "Ah, oh, I wouldn't listen to that guy. He's teaching you to flip, flip the wrist. The right yeah. wrist doesn't flip at impact. Yeah. As you come through impact, if you're not holding the wrist angle." As your arms slow down, the momentum of the club will, you know, extend the right wrist all the way over here. Right, right. So th that's why you don't want to be actively holding that right now, wrist angle. Now, in doing that, because I've, I've experimented with it, because we have a video on my channel about it, um, I, uh, I hit it fat a lot right. doing that. Right. I kind of skid into it and hit it fat. Okay. That's when, well, that's when you're not getting... That, this was a mistake I made in my short game video. And you know, as I become a better instructor, as I get m better, uh, more experienced, I learn better vernacular, better verbiage. And also th the way the public are gonna perceive what you think you're telling them. Right? Correct. Yeah. And in the video, in the sharking video, I said, you know, you need to keep the right arm moving, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I had people coming to me for lessons saying, I got your short game video, I'm not quite getting it, I'm keeping my right arm moving, and then I see, and we can start moving this Yeah, let's way. do this. And then we're doing this. 
Okay. And they were hitting chunks and blades. I'm like, the right arm technically is still moving. It's still way. moving. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I didn't explain this well enough. Okay. So you know, I'm I'm not so arrogant that I think that I know everything, and especially the right way to explain everything. I literally learn how to do my job better every day. And so I said, okay, it's because I think what you just showed is the way I do it. Right. And I've seen you, and when you hit bad shots, that's what you do. And it's the entire upper arm from sh the, I call it the humerus forward now because that's the upper arm bone, you know, yeah. from, from the shoulder to the elbow. Mm -hmm. And so then what I say is, is okay, you've got, you know, if you're chunking the ball or, or blading it as well, you yeah. can do both. When you're hitting a pitch, you want to get your right shoulder all the way over your left foot. Oh, okay. That's a different feeling. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and again. So this is kind of before, and this is. What do you want? Exactly. Yeah, right. And obviously mm -hmm. that's a big swing. That's a thirty yeah, yeah, or forty right. yard shot. But again, this is my. That was a shortcoming that I had that I just assumed, you know, when as an instructor, whenever you, you know that old joke from Bad News Bears, whenever you assume you make. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm making an ass of me, yeah. because. I assume if I say, okay, keep the right arm moving, that everybody's going to know it's this. Yeah. Because you wouldn't toss a ball and go. Yeah. N nobody does that. Yeah. So I just assumed if I said, toss the ball, keep the right arm moving. Well, as a poor assumption on my part. So mm -hmm. now. The I'm, right arm meaning every part of the right the arm. The whole upper arm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, it's going to look like, you know, here are the differences here. This would be the whole upper arm. I don't want to hit one into your camera here. Oh, the GoPro doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. See, I got the whole upper arm forward. Yeah. The shoulders all the way over the left foot mm -hmm. as opposed to heads up. Yep. Okay. Now, I hit the second one okay, but I didn't look like a very good, you know, motion there. Yeah, that was just uh, athletic ability yeah. to be able to hit that well. All right, so let me. I'm going to hit some pitches here. So we have, how many yards is this? This is a good practice thing. I don't know, probably 30, 40, 40 yards. Like 40 yards, to, yards to the front of this green. Yeah. I get this shot and closer on a lot of par fives because I have some decent length, but I've not been converting them okay. into now, like 10 footers okay. or better. There's a reason for yeah. this. Is we were just talking about this with your swing. Yeah. You inherently want to pull down on, you know, yeah. you're trying to get rid of that, mm -hmm. and you've done a really good job. There's, there's been a lot of improvement, but that's still inherent. What's really, it's a, extremely important in a pitch shot, in little shots around the greens. You cannot get narrow on the downswing. Okay. And if I practice this correctly, it'll help my full swing. Do you for think? sure. Okay. Okay. And so, for those that don't know what I mean, if you if you take you know a nice backswing here. And then you get narrow on the downswing when if your hands get closer to your chest. So on a longer shot, it would look like like that. In my old understanding of the swing, this would look very cool to me. Right. Yeah. You, good luck hitting a pitch shot like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You actually, you know, you don't want shaft lean, you know, excessive shaft lean on a pitch. So actually, you'll see, you know, like some of the best pitchers in golf. Now, I'm not talking about pros, I'm talking about yeah. real regular golfers. Are those six or seven handicap guys that everybody makes fun of them because, you know, they're kind of, you know, lag losing casters. Yeah. But they're really, really good at maintaining their width and they're great from 60, 70 yards and pitches around the green because they don't lag the club really hard and get narrow. Yeah, a lot of like 70 year old golfers learn that, you know, when they're, they can't get to the par fours anymore. Right. And you know, that you see the really good short games, but they're, yeah. And, and you watch Jason Day, Jason Day has no wrist set. And, and really, I mean, he's extremely wide on the way down and that's why he's so good. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, Monty, so let's see what I'm up to. See, that's just in the, just in the practice swing, that's yeah. super, super narrow. Okay. You, you know, what do you mean narrow? Which okay. way? Both ways? No, no, no. On the way down. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm against wide and narrow um, as a swing thought. Yeah. But I understand the purpose behind it. Wide to narrow in a pitch. 
that's just death. Okay. Okay. And but when I feel like I go wide and, and stay wide, I hit fat. Right. So that's what I'm nervous about. Right. I think that's why I'm narrowing. Yeah. Exactly right. And that's totally normal. That's among golfers that are like zero to 10 handicaps that are not very good on this shot. Yeah. That's almost universal. When I was trying to uh, become a tour player, I got extremely narrow on mm -hmm. these shots. Yeah. And I took huge divots and I brought them in too low, quite often with too much spin, mm -hmm. and I had no distance control. You know, some days because I was skilled, I would time it up perfectly. You get that cool checker. But, but yeah, I mean, right. I'm coming into these yeah. shots like this. Yeah. You know, my lag in the club so hard that my right hand's almost coming off. Mm -hmm. As long as you get your right shoulder forward, you won't. There you go. Okay. That's much better. See, that was pretty good. Okay, uh, go in. Okay. See, you maintained your width on the downswing. Still a little deeper divot than I would want. As dumb as it sounds, you have to get rid of that hit down mentality, especially on pitch shots. So that's not anything technical other than just a, an impulse to want to hit. Yeah. yeah. And especially, you know, swing bottom is obviously so important in this, but you're trying to shallow the approach. So I've had success with a lot of golfers that, that are in this boat. If you take huge divots on these little shots, get a sense that you're hitting up on it. Yeah. And if you hit behind, this is, everything in golf is always like, you fix one thing, the other thing drops in. Well, if you try to hit down on it, or up on it, yeah. you're gonna have a tendency to wanna drop the right shoulder, mm -hmm. then you're gonna put the club in the ground back here, yeah. which is what you're afraid of doing. Mm -hmm. The hard part is getting in there and trying to get shallow and you'll never hit up on it. Oh, the sound is so different right away. Okay. Yeah, it's rolling like a putt at the hole. Okay, see, and I'll tell you what, and this is how difficult it is. Okay, you know, I'll put false modesty aside. I have none, so I'll put it aside. <laughs> that was really, really good. Yeah. Y you literally can't execute it better than that. I'm a lot, about 10 feet short, but the actual execution of the shot. Yeah. It came in shallow. I didn't have much shaft lean. I, I engaged the bounce. I did everything I was trying to do. And also, guys, just to show you, that's the divot I took on the shot, and that there, it, the bruise, is what Monty did. Okay, but every instinct in my body, I, in my brain, in my feel, I can feel myself wanting to do the exact same thing that you did. You wanna oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? I still do it. I get a little fun. I mean, I can sit here on the practice green talking to you, having a good time, and do this no problem. I get out on the golf course, get a little bit of a funny lie. 30 years of doing it the way that you did, it creeps back in and I'll dig a trench. And if you keep that, if you stay wide and you keep that right shoulder moving, you can set up square to the ball. You don't have to open the face to, to glide it through. I mean, everybody's a little bit different. Yeah. I don't like setting up with an open face. Yeah. I don't, you know. Ah, that was better. Yeah, that looked better. Yeah, the one that you didn't like, good shot. The one that you didn't like, you could kind of see this. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of float load almost feeling. Exactly right. All right, let me try some. And these so, are. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard habit to break, man. I mean, you know, I've only been doing it this way for about three years now. And, you know, I've only been to the practice green probably five times in those three years. Um, and you now I've got 30 years of doing it the other way. Yeah. Okay. Setup wise, how do I look? Uh, you can have the ball a little further forward. Okay. That Just helps. Off the. No, I never measure oh, ball right, off right. your feet. You know, kind of close to the okay. armpit right there. See, that was way better. That felt good. Let's go in. Oh, okay. So you, you see, I mean, that is completely different than is your instinct to do. Yeah. If your intent, and this is true with your whole swing. If your intent is good, okay, that's, which is a very broad and general term, but if your intent to do it correctly is good, even if you don't do it, just intending to do it correctly, you'll get some benefit out of that as you're retraining your body to do it a better way. Cool. Let me, uh, so just to put it in a bottle, guys, um, and Monty, correct me if I'm wrong, but the before and after, and I think this is a lot of people out there, 
it's not just me, this is why I'm kind of sharing this with everyone, is before I, I want to go, my natural impulse that I want to go is to go here and there and hit, right? Hit, yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm wider oh. and then I'm narrow and I hit down. That's oh, me too. A, lo a lot of people. That's, that's my instinct as well. So what I'm going to try to do and what Mon Monty's recommending for, uh, for me and a lot of people is instead of that, I'm going to put the ball a little more in, on my armpit here and then be, be wide and stay wide and it's okay to stay wide as long as this entire unit of right arm gets left right. all the way through. Th there, there's, there's a really, really good drill to teach you the sensation of what staying wide is. Okay. And understand that all of the result, almost universally the results are gonna be terrible. Yeah. Okay, it's a drill. Results are not important. You're teaching yourself a new sensation. Yeah. Is you, you gotta do it right now. Okay. Uh, hit two balls. The first one you're gonna do the drill. The second one you're gonna hit it to the target. Okay. So the first one you're only gonna hit it here. There's your big divot right there that you took on the first. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. This is what you're gonna do. Yeah. You're only gonna take it back far enough to hit that. Okay. To hit it there. Yep. Your first move down. You're gonna. So you're gonna go to here, and your first move down, you're actually gonna push your hands away from the target. All right, so I'm taking, if, I, if I wanted to hit it to my divot there, right. sitting about um, six yards away, I would only go to about there. Yeah, and then your first move down is gonna be that way. I'm so scared of hitting a fat. Oh, right. you're going to. Okay. And maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a good sound. Yeah. Absolutely. The using the bounce sound. Right. Yeah. Okay. All that is doing, it's a drill, it's a feel. It teaches you how to not narrow the hand path okay. your first move down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and if you hit it fat, it's really funny. I always tell people, you're gonna hit it fat. Just so they don't have any anxiety. Yeah. I've already given yeah. you permission to screw yeah. it up. Yeah. And notice that you hit it perfectly. Uh -huh. Okay. Hitting those shots, it's really, really good to teach you what that first move down is going to feel like. Okay? So now hit. So All right, this is now I have a second ball here. No, no. This is what you're going to do. Okay. Do that again. Yeah. Hit it fat. Who cares? Yeah. But give yourself a second to gather the information. Then try to repeat that motion and hit it a okay. full pitch to that pin. All right. So I'm going to hit it to this divot right here, this uh, cutout divot right there. That's six yards away, so I'm gonna go here, here, like that. Mm hmm. Okay. And I wasn't trying to be funny there. I was trying to, to extend here. Okay. And it was fine. And okay. now try that same thing to try this the same feel. 35 yard target. Right. I'm telling you now, I will hit this fat, so I'm not gonna really try to do anything other than do the drill correctly. Yeah, that was pretty terrible. Yeah, that's uh, that's like another nine footer. See, look. Yeah. I can hit this ball right here. Yeah. And go. Oh, there's no one standing there. Okay. Yeah. And I hit that fine. See, this didn't move at all. Yeah. But I mean, I really got jabby yeah. and narrow mm -hmm. with the hand path. Yeah. So when you get nice and wide, this has to get forward, or else you. So what it does is, is getting the hand path wide in that little drill move forces your right upper arm to get forward or else you hit this far behind the ball. So I'm gonna go wide to wider. Exactly. The wide oh, to wider on, drill. On. And resist the urge to open your feet too. You, you oh, okay. Back. Okay, more forward, more forward. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I know, I know. Kay. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right. It's right off your armpit. Okay. I mean, that was so shallow to the point where you almost knifed it. You, you bottom grew that one. Yeah, that was a good result, though. Absolutely. I'd rather have that than... Than the digger. Yeah, than the digger. So wide to wider. Right. And wrist hinge, hinge-wise, because some... Uh, a tour player that I know told me recently, you want to hinge right off the ball. If you were just to sit here, I want the weight of the club to act on the right wrist, both back and through. Okay. Most people control the club head with the right wrist. So like the old, this move, you, 
you're stalling. To me, that's the manipulated motion. You're stalling the momentum of the club head by locking this right wrist. Retarding it. Yeah. Exactly. In my mind, you're swinging the right arm back and through, and the weight of the club is going to slightly set the right wrist, and then after impact, the weight of the club is going to extend the right wrist. And that's good feedback and data for your brain to know how where you where your your club is in space. See, and that's why that's why practicing your pitching with the right arm is so beneficial. Right arm only. Right arm only. Yeah. Or your trail arm if you're yeah. left-handed is left one. Okay. Because what happens is is now in in a pitch the left arm is the one that makes it narrow. Mm -hmm. So it's real easy to stay wide when it's only your right hand on the club. Oh, because your left arm wants to do this. Your left arm is the one that yeah, narrows it. Yeah. And plus, without your left arm on the club, the weight of the club, you can see it in the camera here. I don't want to clunk you there. The weight of the club naturally sets and unsets the right wrist when you just swing your right arm back and forth. So this is, and again, that's what a tossing motion would be. You wouldn't freeze the right wrist. You wouldn't forcibly set the right wrist. Yeah, just, it'd be You'd swing whatever. It back. And it's some, I mean, it's a natural body motion to set the right wrist. Okay, guys, we're going to do one more thing before we wrap this part up. All right, Monty, hit that shot. Oh, really good. Yeah, really good. Okay, now uh, Monty's just given me this 10-minute uh, pitching lesson, and now we're going to put it to the test, and uh, we're going to have a competition here. Uh, just one shot closest to the pin. Okay. Okay. The, the one we've been practicing to. Zero. No excuses. Okay, it's about a 35-yard shot here, and I'm going to try to just erase everything you just taught me and just get into golf course mode here. Okay. See what. Go. That wasn't bad. It just landed landed a little short. We call it 11 feet or so. See, I tried to be funny, and, and <laughs> that I, was funny. I think I went a little long. Uh, that, we're gonna call that a tie. Let's let's go one more. Do you like that nice big gouge? That I was took? really funny. See, I, yeah. I compressed that ball. That was that was a like a 1994 Monty Shinebloom move, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? Kidding aside, yeah. That's the way I would have hit this shot. Yeah. In 1994. Uh -huh. Yeah. Big wide move. I float loaded the mm -hmm. wrist. And yep. I held on for dear life because you know, and I hit down on the ball and took a big couch. Get up. That was actually pretty good. You narrowed it up just a little bit. That's about an eight footer. You narrowed it up just a uh, hair, but, mm -hmm. but. Narrowed it up and then put it into the ground. Yeah. So I, need, I still need to think wide to wider and this whole right unit forward. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what? I was only saying that just for feedback benefit. Yeah. That was really, really good and a huge improvement over just, you know, 10 minutes ago. You just have to get used to doing that and you'll get better at it. Okay. I almost feel so, obligated to lose this on purpose so you feel better about it. No, no, there's a... No, I understand. Oh, short. You win. Bad bounce. No, I, I came up short. Okay, guys, so... Um, Thanks for watching. So this was uh, so the 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 general wrap up of this, even though I did it before, is I'm trying to get rid of that and replace it with that. Um, any final thoughts, Monty, about short game and pitching and stuff? No, just you know, again, the the, the big thing that people have to get past is we were all taught, you know, open stance. Yeah. Ball back. Open face. Open face. Yeah. Keep that right wrist angle. All of those yeah. things make you Engine steep. hold. Yeah. All of those things make you steep and you lead with the leading edge. Mm -hmm. Okay? You want more of a square stance, ball a little more forward. And here's the, to me, this is the important part, is letting the weight of the club 
you know, you're not flipping the club back mm -hmm. and forth. Yeah. You're letting the weight of the club control the right wrist instead of the right wrist controlling the weight of the club. Mm -hmm. So uh, just because we did this in some of our earlier videos and I thought it was worthwhile, I'm going to try to do it again. So now in just a little bullet points here, we're, we're talking about wide to wider, right arm only swings, use the weight of the club both ways. Right, and that little drill where you... Yeah, that's that wide to oh, wider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, right. So, so guys, th those are kind of the three tenants. If you have any more questions about it, put them in the comments below. Uh, Monty and I do... Uh, Monty has a short game video all about this yeah. on his website, montyshinebloom.com. And uh, you can find his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash hititlong. Thanks a lot for watching.